It is a pleasure to be here at this interesting event and introduce to you our guest speaker. The gentleman you will meet is an expert about Bitcoin and a very good friend of us. He spent 14 years of his life working for Procter & Gamble as finance director of a global business unit in several areas, including Geneva headquarters. He is passionate about investments, markets and trading. Since recently, he's been passionate also about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, both from a standpoint of investments and trading. He is the founder of a startup that wants to make cryptocurrencies accessible to everyone, and not only to software engineers, nerds, and very few businessmen. He is convinced that this is a huge revolution, however, it needs education and knowledge to be part of it. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it is with a great pleasure that I'm here to introduce today Mr. Francesco Abate. Hello, hi everyone. Thanks for being here. Despite the, the weather, the cold, the strikes, traffic, anything possible in Geneva. So uh, before we start a couple of things, first, I hate standing in front of a microphone like a university picture. Uh, so let's make it interactive. I'm not here to give you a lecture at 7 p.m. on a Monday on cryptocurrency. It's going to be quite boring. So ask me questions. I'll try to answer as much as possible. Uh, but let's make it a bit more interactive. It's going to be a bit boring if I stand here for one hour telling you what cryptocurrencies are. Uh, second thing is I don't know how much you know about cryptocurrencies. Okay, so I'll try to start from the basics. And then depending on the questions you have, on the interests you have, I'll try to customize the presentation depending on what you want to know. If we don't cover everything in one hour, which is likely, I'm happy to talk afterwards. Later, I'll give you my details and we can speak after, afterwards. So why am I doing this? So why is a person working as a finance director doing a speech on cryptocurrencies? If I thought about this three years ago, I would have never imagined this. Okay? So reality is, this was almost by chance. Okay? So the first time I heard about the was 2011. And I was like, well, this is crap, and I would be billionaire if I had invested back then, and I would be giving a speech on this today. Uh, the reality is, I, I looked at that every few months, and this kept coming up, and people were talking to me about it, and I was like, this has, this has no value, okay? So 2013, for me, was nerd stuff, some guys with a sweater, and having anti-government passions and things in mind, I didn't pay attention to this. And by the way, in those years, Bitcoin crashed from $1,000 to $200. So to me, it was like the end. Bitcoin is done. I was right. Makes no sense. Next big thing. Reality is, it kept existing, OK? So for a few months, it stayed at minus 80% versus the previous all-time high. But this thing didn't die. And I was like, why do you need to die? I mean, you, you should die, right? Minus 80%? What's wrong with you? And it kept existing. So I was like, okay, let, let me get a better look at this. So I started studying. Uh, I met many people in this industry or in this area, and many of them started trading, investing, just buying Bitcoin. My dentist the other day asked, told me he wants to do an ICO. And I was like, you're a dentist, really? So people start with the hype in mind and with the passion to make money. And that's perfectly fine. I'm not here for charity in Bitcoin, fine. But I started from understanding Bitcoin, so my, my travel was a bit different on this. Okay, so I started studying Bitcoin, what, what's different about it, what's the code, what's the programming, what's the platform, what's the software, how does this work, how does you really create value with this. So what's Bitcoin? When I was trying to write this description, I thought about looking for someone else who had a better understanding and a simple way of explaining this. So the guy on, the, on your left, Shiloshi Nakamoto, is supposedly the inventor of Bitcoin. Mysterious story, no one knows who he is, if he's alive or not. Anyway, when he was asked after inventing this, a few months after inventing this, he was like, you know, explain to you what it is, it's too complex. I, I just can't. The guy invented Bitcoin, okay? A bit complex. The second guy is Charlie Lee. Uh, many of you will not know the guy, but he was the former director of software engineering at one of the most important Bitcoin uh, software companies. Then he left and he founded Litecoin. 
which is an alternative for, for Bitcoin. The guy is a multi-billionaire. But when he was asked about what's Bitcoin, he was like, I can't really tell you. I mean, this changes every day. And it's true, it depends on the, the angle you look for Bitcoin. So I was like, okay, where else can I go? So I went to New York Times, and that's my point of, a few minutes ago. I went to New York Times a few, few days ago, and I was just typing, what's Bitcoin? And I saw this article. So the article was called, what's Bitcoin? How does it work? Which is more or less my title for today, right? The first line was, why do criminals use Bitcoin? And I'm like, guys, seriously? And this was New York Times. I mean, I'm not inventing things. I'm not, I can't use Photoshop. I don't know what it is. I can barely use Excel. So this is real. This is a picture of New York Times, first sentence, why do criminals like it? And I'm like, okay, maybe it's a bit of a bad angle to start. Why won't the government just shut it down? <laughs> Guys, tell me what it is first, then you can shut it down. By the way, you can't. Uh, can Bitcoin users give themselves more Bitcoin for free? Like, can you go to the market and steal ham and cheese? And, like, no, you can't, by the way. Are there legal uses? So, <laughs> The starting point was, for sure it's illegal, for sure you're a criminal, you're maybe laundry man, or you're buying pot, or God knows what, but is there something legal you can do with this? New York Times, October the 1st, 2017. So, when I tell you the media tends to be a bit pessimistic on this, that's what I meant, okay? Now, to, to come to the point, what's Bitcoin, okay? In, in essence, Bitcoin is just a digital file. It's a digital file, who registers transactions. And transactions happens to be about money. It's nothing else, okay? It's a ledger. It's a list of transactions, nothing more than this. Simply, it's a digital one, so technically it's a software. Someone programs Bitcoin in C++, it's open source, like Linux, like Tesla. It's a software to make transactions, one after the other, in a, in a series of, uh, of, of block called blockchain. Nothing more than this. The difference is, compared to a normal, uh, a normal ledger, which you might have at work, in accounting, or in your PC, is that there are no central servers. So every computer who runs the Bitcoin software has a copy of this. So when they tell you Bitcoin is dispersed, that's what they meant. It, it means there is no central servers in Washington, D.C. with a copy of the blockchain, but there are roughly 13,000 computers in the world who runs the full Bitcoin software, who has a copy on it uh, of the full blockchain. So from the block zero to today, which is almost half a million blocks. Okay, nothing more than this. Now, how does it work? So imagine you want to earn money on Bitcoin, assuming you have Bitcoin, or you want to receive Bitcoin from someone. Maybe you need to buy drugs. So to, to send Bitcoin, what, yeah, sure. Sure, absolutely. So, Bitcoin works on a ledger, and the ledger is a blockchain, okay? They are two very different things. Blockchain is a technology, which you can use for many different things. Bitcoin is just an application of what you can do with a blockchain. A blockchain is a decentralized ledger, which registers transactions one after the other, in such a way which is impossible to change it afterwards, and it's impossible to destroy. So think about, in accounting, you have a ledger of all the debit and credit that you keep on a journal or on your computer. The blockchain is a sequence of transactions linked one after the other in a very specified order, which is impossible to change in the future and which will forever remain the same. And the more you go, the more you add transactions on top of the blockchain and different people in different parts of the world as a copy of this and no one can change it retrospectively. Yes. If you have, uh, big hackers and, and that's the point. We'll talk it. Now, Bitcoin is not about hacking. It's about mathematics. Okay? So the... All hackers are mathematicians anyway. Okay. So there is, a, there is one chance out of 10 at the potency of 77 that this can happen. Imagine the hurt. Imagine all the grain of sand in the hurt. And imagine a single grain of sand as inside an entire herd of additional grain of sand. That's more or less the chances you have to hack Bitcoin. What you can hack is an exchange, right? This you can try. Hacking Bitcoin, meaning disrupting the blockchain, would require a computational power 
which is which will not be available in the next 200 years. And the point is the blockchain is mathematically protected. So how does it work? Once you buy it and you want to sell it, what you do really, really is you broadcast your transaction, which is Francesco address, whatever, wants to send X Bitcoin to not someone, but to a different address. Bitcoin works with addresses. Think about the address like your name in an anonymous form. So I have multiple addresses, 0, 7, sex, y, 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 z, 2, 3, 4, whatever. And then you broadcast this to the network. What the network does is update the copy of the blockchain with your transaction, check if your previous transactions have a balance equal to what you want to send, so we don't spend money you don't have, check the address is right, and move the check and balances so the account balance changes. Nothing more than this. If you want to know more, uh, I was like, what can I give you as a gift? Uh, th that's my gift, okay? So this will be um, working for next year. If you want to try it, you will find here everything which is about material, education, uh, daily newsletters, uh, and you can also see what our traders are doing. We have three traders. They're pretty good. Not cheap, but good. Uh, we did a test in last month, they deliver 80 something percent in five weeks, it's good. So everything which you can see here is free. You can go ahead, I think you can need to register, I think you need to leave your email, and then the, the people will include you in all the newsletters, trading tips and whatever else. So you know how to start, you know what to do, and hopefully you can also gain some money. That's it, I can take more questions afterwards, yeah. <laughs> so, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am the president of the Young Executives, and uh, I would like to really thank this guy over here because he's been a great speaker. I think, uh, as well, maybe a source of uh, you know inspiration as well uh, for some of us to to start investment in our lives and also extend our knowledge, which in, in many many cases is limited by by the things that we don't know. And Maybe tonight we were able to, to know something more about uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I would like to remind you as well of uh, an event that uh, the Chamber of Commerce will do tomorrow. You will find some flyers outside. But especially about uh, our first networking event for the year, which uh, will take place in uh, January 17th at Vicolo Trentanoi, it's a cute Italian restaurant in, uh, in Carucci, so I invite you all to be there. The difference between seminars and networking events is very easy. Uh, the, during the networking event we drink, we eat and we have fun and we network uh, by the true meaning of it which means that uh, I want and we want uh, people genuinely looking forward to meet new people in the Geneva area uh, we meet. So if you are new to this, if this was your first event, make sure that you drop your name, last name, email so that we can contact you because it's great to have you know, this group uh, Enlarging, we started last year with uh, really a couple of people, and today, you know, we are, we already can come to, to do events like this one with more than 100 people. So it has been a great success so far, and we're really trying to extend it even more. Last but not least, our next seminar instead will be uh, taking place most likely here again in February, and the speaker will be Roberto Bocca which is uh, uh, the head of the World Economic Forum for uh, Renewable Energy. Uh, right now he's in a uh, meeting, uh, preparing his Davos presentation, and uh, we would have the pleasure of have his presentation disclosed for the first time in public, uh, exactly the same one that he would disclose in, uh, in Davos. So, thank you very much for being here, really, and I look forward to, to see you at the next event. Merry Christmas to everybody, because this is also our last event for the year. Happy New Year. Thank you.